Hi, welcome once again uh, to this uh, episode on the Central Vista. And uh, as you are aware, we've been running a series on uh, the Central Vista. In fact, we started long back when uh, it, was, it was being envisioned. And at that time, we were doing walk the Central Vista. Uh, now it's apparently not possible to walk along the Central Vista because it's been that bad. And uh, in the series today, we have uh, Ananya Vajpayee to talk about uh, the issue of the Central Vista, especially uh, this, this trajectory that has taken place from the Nehruvian model of uh, the Central Vista to the modern. I, mean, don't, I won't even call it postmodernism, it is probably more to do with feudal mindset. Uh, yeah, the way it's being, it's, it's being done. And uh, welcome Ananya, to, to this show. And uh, let me also introduce you, Ananya. So it doesn't require much introduction, uh, is a writer, a historian, and is also a fellow with the Center for Civil and Society here in India. And uh, she's authored many books. And uh, uh, one of the books that I think is mentioned here is The Right is a Public uh, for Political uh, Foundations. Um, so welcome, Ananya. And uh, I'm not sure whether you've watched our previous shows, but you know, we've done uh, series right from um, somebody calling it, uh, you know, linked with Vastu, somebody saying it's a complete waste of money. Uh, the other saying, I mean, why during this pandemic? Uh, but, you know, there, there, there has been whole, and of course, uh, the severest of criticism has come from the architects who, who are pointing out that, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, A, neither it's, uh, it's truly professional, uh, B, uh, some of them are even pointing fingers at, you know, the, drawing a parallel between what Hitler and uh, Albert Speer were doing in Germany. Quite similar to that is what we are witnessing here in the Central Vista. Uh, but yeah, I, th I think you have your own take on it. I mean, what do you think? I mean, is it is it is it a um, genuinely thoroughly discussed plan, or is it just more to do with a, you know new biopic? Of, of, of our Prime Minister, who is really the driving force uh, for this Central Vista? You know, I mean, I think that uh, there's a, there are, a, you know, a lot of questions uh, about the need uh, to redo the Central Vista, the, um, the particular changes that are being made, the speed at which the project is progressing, um, the way in which uh, laws, conventions, norms, precedents, uh, regulations, um, you know, institutional jurisdictions, all of that has been uh, disregarded and set aside um, uh, in order to uh, enable this to go ahead in a particular manner um, uh, and according to a particular um, sort of uh, uh, brief. Right, uh, which like a particular brief that I think the you know the, the the architects and the builders have from uh, from the government from the highest levels of the government, um, and in order to you know realize that brief, I think uh, there's been uh, uh, you know a complete kind of overriding of um, what are the actual. Uh, limitations of the space, what are the capacities, what are the needs, um, and uh, you know, what are going to be the costs of, 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 this, uh, of this whole enterprise. Um, so I, you know, I'm, I'm a historian and um, I mean, my initial uh, concern was with, uh, I mean, I've written about the constitution and the making of the constitution and I, you know, I work on a Baker um, and I have visited the parliament uh, just before um, uh, 2014 uh, national elections. Um, um, I went to actually look at, uh, you know, look at, look, look at the building and, and, and look at the way things were arranged. I was trying to uh, reimagine the constituent assembly debates. And um, so my first concern was, you know, why do we need a new parliament? And what's going to happen to the existing Sansad Bhavan? Um, and you know, uh, why all of a sudden this very drastic, dramatic uh, kind of addition? So, what do you think? Why? I mean, when you say why, I mean, what do you think? Why is it? 
Well, I mean, the, 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 uh, I beg your pardon, the explanation that's been given is that, um, you know, uh, we're going to have more constituencies. There's going to be a delimitation of constituencies uh, and more, uh, more uh, uh, legislators. So we, we'll, you know, we're going to have more members of parliament, and we need we need a larger space. And the space that is there is not enough. It's not comfortable. It's very cramped, etc. These kind of explanations. Um, but still, you know, you feel um, that uh, you could possibly have, um, you know, a set of renovations, a set of expansions within the existing structure. You don't necessarily need. Or to build a whole new structure, and that too in a drastically different uh, shape, uh, you know, which which will totally overpower and and sort of undermine the the historic, um, you know, the, the the round building of the of the original constitution, uh, of the original uh, Parliament House, uh, the Sansad Bhavan. In any case, so that's where I kind of first became aware of what is happening, and then I also live in Delhi. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, even though there's been a lockdown and, and uh, you know, movement has been very restricted over the last 15, 16 months, um, uh, nevertheless, you know, one knows if a certain part of town, there's going to be a massive construction project and roads are closed and, you know, entire uh, kind of areas are blocked off and access becomes difficult to central Delhi. Uh, to 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 the India Gate area, to to the whole Lachins area, um, uh, to Connaught Place, and so on. Um, so then, um, uh, you know, I began to realize that this is really going to take a very long time uh, to to realize uh, this building of the Parliament, and it's going to really sort of you know bring Central Delhi to a halt for for effectively for for people who live in the city. Uh, for a number of years, uh, but really my my alarm sort of went through the roof. Started started going through the roof when I realized that um, uh, the National Museum and the National Archives, as well as the Indira Gandhi National Center for the Arts, all three of which are institutions that I mean I you know have used for work um, uh, uh, to look for manuscripts, uh, to look at uh, art objects you know, for all kinds of historical research. Um, and these are, you know, places I've been going throughout my academic career, throughout my life from the time I was a student. Um, and uh, earlier at, at one point, I was also a fellow at uh, Teen Murthy at uh, the Nehru Memorial Museum and Library. So, um, you know, I've, I've had a lot to do with, with these institutions. And no, the, yeah, but yeah. just tell me. Yeah, but tell, tell no, me. Yeah. The idea you. that, the idea that okay, not good. only would they be uh, uh, moved, but that the very buildings, the structures would be demolished and that we had no clear sense of where uh, they would be relocated, how soon they would be relocated and how actually they would make, um, you know, they would transfer the contents of any of these, you know, the archives, the museum or the, the IGNCA how they would safely you know, move all the contents of, of these three institutions to new locations uh, and why. Um, you know, that, that became a real subject of concern, not just for me, but for the entire community of, of art historians, of researchers, of, of, of you know, um, people at all who deal uh, professionally with, um, you know, with, the, with, with the past and who need uh, sources. Uh, who need archives, you know? Tell me, tell me Anandi, I'm, 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 that, that uh, raises another question. What is it that you are fearing? Because the government and, you know, uh, various agencies of the government, including the Ministry of Public Affairs, uh, have categorically said that, look, everything will be preserved or, or, shall I say, will be protected. But you are saying it's not clear. I mean, where, where, in, where, where would you find them, all that material that, that is there? And you know, the I can understand the need for uh, bringing down some of the older buildings, but even some of the buildings are not even forty years uh, uh, to the. I mean, I mean, I mean since, since since they 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 were constructed. So what is it that you're fearing? I mean, I mean, 
do you think because some of the historians earlier have pointed out they want to erase you know the the historical the so-called modernism uh, of, of of our historical you know, conjunctures or you know whatever we've been able to do in in in, in post independence so are you drawing kind of similar conclusion uh, while doing so or is it just that you are uh, making a point let look uh, take care of of, of well, no, I mean, uh, there's there's a couple of things uh, here that are of concern. Okay, one is um, the, the sort of physical location, uh, the centrality, uh, and the accessibility of, uh, you know, key national um, uh, institutions, right? Uh, I mean, a museum, a national museum, the national archives, right? You know, different states have archives, different uh, parts of the country. I mean, I've, I've traveled all over the country for research and you know, I've used the Maharashtra State Archives, which are in, in, uh, in, in uh, Mumbai, in the, you know, in the Elphinstone College um, building. Um, I've used, uh, you know, uh, I've looked at museums in, in, in Calcutta, in, in uh, you know, in all, of, all over the country, right? Um, uh, but the point is that this is your national museum, right? It is the key museum which represents the entire kind of art history of, of, of the Indian nation in its kind of, uh, you know, post-colonial avatar. Um, and it's, it's full of priceless things, right? Similarly, the National Archives, I mean, there are millions and millions of documents there. The IGNCA is a more specialized institution, um, but it has a fabulous collection of manuscripts, um, you know, and I actually work with uh, Sanskrit uh, and with pre-modern, uh, pre-colonial archives and texts. I work primarily on texts uh, and I've been using the IGNCA, you know, since, uh, since I was, you know, a student at JNU. Um, so, um, there's a library there as well, a very large and, and, and uh, excellent library for, for pre-modernists. So, so one issue is, you know, um, do we have a, a, a complete inventory of what is in each of these places? Uh, do we have safe ways to store them, pack them up, move them somewhere else, and then put them out again for display, right? Um, is there enough space to do that? That's one set of issues, right? But the other set of issues is that, uh, you know, these, these buildings and others in that area basically constitute a kind of cultural district, right? A, a key cultural district, okay. right? Uh, which is also walkable, yeah. right? So there's a lot of footfalls, there's a lot of tourist traffic. People come to see the National Museum from all over the world, right? And at the same time, they're also able to visit um, the India Gate. They're also able to see the Rashtrapati Bhavan. They're also able to, you know, have a tour of that entire kind of, uh, you know, seat of uh, government, uh, which is, which is um, you know, quite ceremonial uh, and also marks the transition that India made from, from a, a uh, British colony to to an independent uh, republic, right? So it's 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 a lot of open space, and there's a lot of things to see and do. Not just for specialists like me, who are actually going to use the materials that are there, but also for travelers, for tourists, for people who come to Delhi for the first time. They could be Indians, they could be foreigners, um, and so on, and for scholars and researchers who come from the world over. So there's a lot of you know, advantage to all these things being close together, where they are currently, basically at the intersection of Rajpath and Janpath, you know, on either side of Janpath. So, you know, you can walk, uh, you know, uh, and, and spend a day or two, uh, and, and you, you would be able to see, uh, you know, the sites, as it were. Um, secondly, all these buildings and campuses, I mean, you know, of course, they have problems in the sense that they need uh, to be um, uh, refurbished. They need repairs. You know, they need upkeep. They need updating, right? In in terms of their uh, 
technological and infrastructural, you know, uh, kind of facilities, um, you know, their ability to keep keep old things safe. You know, you need the right kind of temperatures and 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 light control and uh, air conditioning. You need the right kind of computing power. You need the right kind of public facilities. You know, bathrooms, cafes, uh, shops, and so on. Um, you know, you you need you need all of that, but you you can also do that whilst retaining yeah. what is uh, uh, you know a, a very a, a very graceful and historic set of buildings, but also the fact that they are clustered together uh, in a way that is very very convenient, uh, even if you are on foot um, as 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 a visitor, uh, a traveler, or uh, you know a user. Uh, of any of these places. So um, that now seems to be all about to go away, right? In the sense that uh, these buildings will be uh, demolished, right? Which is in itself a loss of uh, heritage, even if it's not colonial heritage, it's post-colonial heritage. Even if these buildings are not 100 years old, but they're only 40, 50 years old, that's still a loss, right? Because they they, exemplify a certain stage of the early republic the early years of independence um you know when uh, when the, the the early kind of administration of of nehru was uh, busy building up or uh, you know all these uh, all these institutions um and so many well known architects curators artists designers you know were brought in to kind of uh, you know create this uh, this uh, this vista um, and create this district, this cultural district. Um, so first of all, all of that is going to be scattered in different places, different parts of the city. Okay, as, as and we don't even know clearly exactly where anything is going. Secondly, we are not assured of the safety of the of the of the objects themselves. And thirdly, it's hard to understand. You know why you can't fix up what are basically very good buildings with a sound kind of capacity and design um, rather than uh, you know going all out and uh, trying to make everything from scratch right uh, or moving as in the case of the national museum we've been told that uh, potentially all its contents are going to go to the North Block and the South Block, which are currently government offices, further up the Raisina Hill. Um, and that suggests, you know, there's no imagination that buildings are designed to suit a particular purpose. Now, an office building is not a museum building and vice versa, right? Okay. And the kind yeah. of the kind of you know work that would take uh, to convert one into the other. When you already have a perfectly good museum, right, which you could, which you could, uh, you know, uh, you could renovate, right, um, that that part isn't isn't clear at all, right. No, and no, no. That's what we've been we've been yeah, asking. And, 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 and two last questions. I mean, but then you can answer both of them together. A, because you know, a large number of our viewers are not historians; they do not know. Yeah, they do not know yeah, much sure. about the National Archive. So when you are building this argument that it is so important to preserve every bit of the manuscripts, every bit of what we have collected post-colonial, even 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 yeah, our past, because uh, I believe archives have all them. So how do you translate or correlate it to to a common man, you know, the common person, and why is it important? B, also, uh, uh, I mean, do you? I mean, I mean, because I come from uh, from a from a political background in the sense that yeah. you know, uh, uh, so, so to explain it politically, you know, uh, Nehru was a uh, kind of uh, uh, I mean, someone who steered it, uh, steered modernism in, in, in I mean, so bringing out diversity of our country. So really, took time to develop. Uh, infrastructure, trying to develop, you know, that whole consciousness uh, amongst our countrymen. And that's why you have this large district that you think, the cultural district uh, here. But then over the period of time, we are finding, I mean, this, uh, 
this transformation that is taking place, one part of the thing is already taken away by the war memorial, you know, so that pride of, of the nation, you know, fighting some enemy. And then now, again, this would be usurped by, by the government agencies to just showcase this look, the government is very powerful. So just answer both these questions. I mean, how, I mean, is there a relationship between both? I mean, uh, and both the things that they're telling yeah. yeah. So, so your first question was, you know, how, how would ordinary people yeah. uh, and citizens relate to, um, relate to this whole question? I mean, would they see it as, as being urgent, yeah. right? And I think uh, the answer is yes. Because um, Ananda, just let, let, let me uh, point out, because, you know, they can correlate by by uh, by their open spaces being usurped, by you know, uh, the urban commons being taken over, for example. But yeah. particularly, what you've mentioned about it, you know, the historical value. Of yeah, let me yeah, let please. me explain that. I mean, um, you know, when you when you visit any place, you know, it could be a small place like your hometown, like Shimla, right? or uh, which, which actually was the summer capital of, of the British, right? Uh, or you visit, um, you know, uh, one of the great uh, centers of, of uh, modern Indian art, Baroda, right? Or you go to Shantini Ketan, right? Um, or you go to, of course, a big city like Calcutta or Mumbai, or you go abroad anywhere. You go to Rome, you go to, you know, Paris, you go to Berlin. What do you always, as a visitor want to see, right? You want to see the historic part of the city. You want to see the sites, right? You want to see the monuments. You want to get a sense of, um, you know, how the, the urban uh, layout uh, reflects, right? The culture, the history, the past, the present, uh, you know, the, the mentality of, of the place that you're in, right? So just like people would go to Old Delhi, Right, or people would go to Nizamuddin, or people would go to Meheroli, right, when they come to see Delhi. People also go to Lachin's Delhi, and they go to Connaught Place, and they go to India Gate, right? So, um, if you're going to completely transform, let's say, one part of this historic uh, kind of, uh, you know, center, the heart of, of the capital, Right, that concerns everybody. That doesn't just concern people who are actually going into the museum or the archives, you know, with with a with a view to study, um, you know, objects or or documents that are preserved there, right? Um, and the open spaces all around, you know, the lawns, uh, where you, from where you watch the Republic Day parade, uh, you know, where you can you know go and uh, take a walk in the evening, uh, you know, where protests are held. Uh, and have been held in recent years over all kinds of issues, right? Um, where, where spontaneously people can gather. I mean, there is a feeling of uh, publicness to this entire area, right? Even though it houses the presidential palace, the Rashtrapati Bhavan, it is nevertheless open uh, for people to see, enjoy, and use, right? And to feel part of a um, kind of collective, right, of, of, of citizenry and of, or, you know, sort of ordinary Indian, being ordinary Indians, right, um, without, without fear or favor. So in that sense, um, you know, you've seen thousands of people uh, signing these petitions which are circulating online. And most of those people are not at all specialists or historians or scholars or architects or anything like that. They're just like regular people saying, why are you tearing up the most iconic, beautiful part of our capital city, right? Now, the, the second question you, you asked was about the, the politics, right, of, 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 of this entire venture. And there we enter into genuinely problematic, uh, uh, you know, territory. Um, because I think that, um, you know, uh, this 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 administration, this regime, I would say, that is uh, you know currently uh, in 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 in, play, in in power. Um, I mean, has been very keen to um, uh, minimize or undermine uh, the role of um, um, you know uh, 
Nehruvian, specifically Nehruvian uh, ideology and Nehruvian developmentalism uh, and um, Nehruvian socialism uh, in the making of modern India, right? Uh, I mean, in their view, uh, from a Hindu right perspective, you know, India took a wrong turn at independence uh, uh, by going in that direction and by becoming um, sort of, uh, you know, the kind of uh, secular socialist democratic uh, developing country that it, it was throughout the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, uh, and even, even uh, you know, until quite recently. Um, but the, the point is, you know, you may disagree ideologically with, with the way things happened, right? But those were popular decisions. There was an electoral mandate just like there is today, right? And um, at the time, uh, a very big task faced the new government, right? Which was to uh, create an independent identity, right? Which was authentic, which was rooted in the past, but which was also, uh, you know, aspiring uh, to, to make India, you know, powerful, self-sufficient, uh, you know, the world's largest democracy, when it had emerged from the shadow of colonialism through a big struggle, right? So how to do that? How to retain the legacy of, of, a, of a rich and complex and very diverse past, right? For a very vast population, right? With very little resources. And at the same time, create the institutions and the infrastructure so that things would continuously get better and India would become stronger and, and, and freer, right? It would realize the promise that was made at the time of independence. So in order to do that, you know, a lot of things had to be built, built for the first time. And nobody says that mistakes weren't made. You know, we now see the kind of downside of, of the Green Revolution. We see the downside of a certain kind of uh, developmentalism, which is not ecologically sensitive, right? We are living with, 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 you know, massive pollution. We are living with resource scarcity, right? Um, uh, we are living with a certain kind of uh, urbanism, which is uh, very, very um, uh, uh, problematic. It's, it's not sustainable, right? We have models of development that are not sustainable. Yeah. So those mistakes were made, but at the same time, True. an entire kind of era, you know, half a century or more, uh, of of India's history, of India's modern history, yeah. right? And you can't simply erase it, physically erase it and start over, right? And pretend that it never happened, right? You have to work with what the past gives you uh, in order to fashion maybe a different path, right? That remains to be seen, but it, it can't be, um, you know, it can't be by executive order you know, that you simply stamp out what was before, right? Uh, and say that, you know, this is worthless and this is, this is completely wrong. You know, it isn't, first of all, you know, it has served us well yeah. uh, for the most part, right? And there are many things there to be proud of. Uh, and whilst preserving and, and, and valuing those, we need to think about what we need for the future, right? But that kind of consensus building exercise has not been undertaken especially around this central vista redevelopment, right? People have not been taken on board. Uh, you know, advice has not been taken from those who are experienced, those who are experts, those who know what they're talking about, you know, whether it's planners or it's conservationists or it's people in heritage or people in architecture, people in, in uh, you know, urban affairs, um, you know, historians. Uh, nobody's been um, sort of, uh, taken on board, right? And instead, a whole series of these announcements are made, right? That now this is going to happen. Now that is going to happen. We're going to build this. We're going to break that. You know, we're going to expand this. We're going to demolish that. But, you know, you need to explain to the public why this is necessary, why it's important, how it is justified, and how it's going to be paid for. And especially during a pandemic, a national emergency, a health emergency, the worst kind of public disaster you've had, you know, since World War II, right? Uh, on such a scale globally, 
right? And India is the worst hit, of course, um, you know, given its population. Um, so why is it that, you know, we have to uh, be redesigning, you know, a part of our capital city when our resources would be better put elsewhere? Right? Okay. That is a political question. Yeah. It's not, not just, a, you know, a design question or an aesthetic yeah. question. Got it. And now the last point, I mean, of course, this is, going to, uh, this is what I've been asking all of you. What do you see as a future? You know, this is what I ask everyone. So, what do you think is going to happen? See, I'm not very encouraged by the track record of this government. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of any of their big schemes, right? I mean, I feel there is a pattern here and there is a tendency to make a big announcement, make a big splash, you know, um, uh, you know, suddenly declare, uh, you know, anything from demonetization to a lockdown to, you know, uh, uh, this campaign, that campaign, um, you know, a complete change in the order of things, right? Um, without the requisite planning, right? Without a sense of the potential uh, dangers, Right or the the uh, even any kind of uh, expectation, right? There doesn't seem to they don't display any expectation that there may be resistance to this, that people may ask questions, that there may be a challenge, you know, to whatever it is that you have, that you want to do, right? This tendency to do stuff overnight, right? Um, the way in which uh, you know Article Three Seventy was suddenly abrogated in 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 Kashmir, right? Um, the way in which demonetization came about, literally you woke up one morning, you know, uh, on the morning of the American election. And, and uh, lo and behold, you know, all your currency is, is, is valueless, right? And these things have long-term implications and ramifications, right? So I feel that, uh, and, 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 you know, the outcomes are not what they're promised to be, right? Yeah. The reality yeah. is that your economy is doing very badly, right? The reality is that our pandemic management has been disastrous, yeah. right? The vaccine rollout was announced, largest vaccine rollout in the world, you know, and, and look at where we are, hardly three or 4% of the population is vaccinated and it's a disaster for the whole world, right? So mm -hmm. I feel that the future of the Central Vista is similarly kind of, um, you know, has, has this dark cloud hanging over it because we don't necessarily have the money for it. We don't necessarily have plans that make sense, right? We have not anticipated that so many people will have so many questions and how are we gonna answer them, right? Um, and essentially the message is, it's all gonna be okay and we need this and we have the money to do it, but that is not the truth, right? Ooh, I, yeah. The truth is that, that you, know, you need your money elsewhere. The truth is that you know you are exposing hundreds of workers, um, you know, to 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 infection and to danger uh, by keeping them together on a uh, open construction site, you know, in the midst of your lockdown and your you know your your wave, your second wave, your third wave, whatever, yeah. right? And, and 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 the future in this case, rather than you know a sudden glorious reappearance of uh, you know, a whole new kind of power center, uh, which is being uh, projected. Um, I think the reality is going to be much more messy, much more expensive, much more destructive, and much more contested. Um, you know, as you've seen from a series of these court cases and, uh, you know, challenges that people have filed uh, in, in court, you know, on environmental grounds, on, on the grounds of land use, uh, on 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 uh, uh, issues of access, uh, you know, on issues of design, all kinds of things. People have said, you know, this is not in the public interest. And I think that, like many other decisions that this government has made, many other announcements that it's made, the lack of planning, the lack of consensus building, the lack of public information and openness and transparency and the willingness to have a public conversation about public issues, right? That also afflicts the central vista, 
right? In the, exactly the same way, in, in that same pattern, which is which doesn't inspire confidence, right? Thank you. Thank you, Anand. Thank you. And I think there's something very interesting you said, glorious reappearance, you know? Huh? <laughs> glorious reappearance that the government wants to really project. Yeah, so that's very interesting what you've said. And um, I think also correctly pointed out, and I mean, what you pointed out is about demonetization, about, uh, you know, political decisions. But take, for example, the Sabarmati stuff that is. And Sabarmati has become a pawn now. It's, it's such a dirty place where I mean, the pictures that are really uh, hitting us uh, every day. So that's so, a, that's a, yeah, so that's a yeah. specific. So, that's a so, specific. So, you know, instantly, the glorious reappearance that, I mean, so the pattern that you're trying to build, the pattern already exists. I mean, it is already there. Well, that's, yeah. So, so, so that is specific to the particular architectural firm and the yes. particular architect and the particular design um, ideology, you could say. Uh, or the kind of practice that this particular uh, firm has, right? And its track record. Yeah. So, uh, you know, HCP and, 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 you know, Vimal Patel, the chief architect have, you know, been working closely with uh, uh, the prime minister when he was the chief minister of Gujarat, yeah. Yeah. right? And they've, they've done a number of projects together there, uh, of which the Sabarmati Riverfront is, is yeah. a good example. Now again, that doesn't inspire confidence. Yeah. Right? If you've done something, if you've done that's something what that's what else, you've done something beautiful. Yeah, that's what, that's something what I was trying to do. Yeah, you know, then then we say, oh, now you're ready to move up on a, and scale it up, yeah. right? But if you've got a series of disasters behind you, right, and 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 you have the residents of Ahmedabad saying, you know, what the hell has happened to our city, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah, true. And then you bring that, that to the to the national capital, and you say, "Oh, now I'm going to do this all over again, yeah. and bigger, and much yeah. more expensive." I mean, recently I I, I heard or read something um, where um, you know there was talk about redoing the Yamuna Riverfront, right. and you know it it strikes fear in your heart yeah. because if if what's going to happen to the Yamuna, you have seen what what is happening to Kashi, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. With the only wish, I mean, I mean, I mean you've really uh, brought the whole picture of the importance of the natural archives and the historical perspective to, you know, the cultural district. Uh, with the only hope, you know, we know Albert Speer was fired during the course. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean then, 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 during the, so let's, let's hope, let's hope something similar happens here. And, and and as you said, it's a non it's an unsustainable model, it's an unsustainable uh, complete not just project, but you know the, the pattern, the pattern that that uh, that that is interesting. No, the the key thing is not whether somebody was fired or not. The key thing is no, it's the just, analogy. Yes. No, no, the yeah. analogy that you are drawing yeah. is from uh, you know the the kind of worst modern dictator that yeah. the world has seen, yeah. and his vision of the new Nazi capital of, uh, you know, which was going to replace uh, Berlin as it existed, you know, and build this kind of, uh, you know, Germania yeah, uh, and, 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 and the kind of fascist vision that was, uh, you know, uh, literally going to be realized there, you know, as, as, a, as, a, as a physical reordering of the city of Berlin, um, you know, if that analogy is coming to your mind, Right, that in itself is is deeply disturbing because we are. Yes, because, yes, because that's been Martin. pointed out repeatedly, quite bringing out you know those those threads from. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I and and you know, I think I I at least thus far, you know, this government would not. You know, it, it it's very proud of its electoral mandate. You know, it still imagines that it is it is really uh you know uh you know. There's a valid kind of majority that it has won in in the 2019 election, and uh, you know whatever it's doing, it's doing for the for the growth of this democracy, right? Nevertheless, the pattern it seems to be following is rather authoritarian, right? 
uh, not to say fascist. I mean, we won't, we won't even get. Yeah, into I think we can we can go into those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely, definitely. Uh, but I'm 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 you know I'm it, it it's concerning that you know you you, you refer to uh, uh, Speer you know more than once um, uh, in terms of um, the the kind of effect of um, you know power that is sheer political power and authority that is sought to be uh, expressed architecturally through this central vista redesign. Yes. You know, that is, is uh, essentially undemocratic. Yes. Let's put it that way, you know. And uh, that is not acceptable yes. uh, in the world's biggest democracy, right? Especially with one with, with, with such a glorious history of constitution making um, and 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 the way in which you know we we won independence and 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 the way in which we created this uh, democratic structure um, uh, with with people like you know uh, Ambedkar and Nehru uh, at the helm, um, you know to then take this kind of a turn is 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 shameful. And you know whether we end up agreeing or not, it is certainly worthy of a massive public debate before you know these decisions are taken. And that debate is still to be had. Yeah. Great. So thank you, Ananya. And uh, uh, thank you also for bringing out the pattern that speaks about, you know, it's more for optics than, yeah. uh, you know, yeah, than, it's than more about optics. Yeah. yeah, yeah more for optics. Yeah. In each case, it's about optics. Actually, yeah. 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 That we so, took a big decision. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, it, it, you know, this is transformational. Yeah, yeah. And this is completely, you know, you know, okay. uh, to change everything. But for the better or not? Yeah. Well, mostly not. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for staying. Thanks again. Thanks. I'm talking to you. Yeah.